What's up, what's up, what's up? It's Curry Spice back with another video and it's freezing cold. I'm by Huntington Beach, as you can see in the background. <laughs> so, okay, so I talked to you guys about a dream that I had. It was a dream I had a few days ago and it was a weird dream. Okay, so let me give you some backstory first. So I've been going through a personal growth journey, as you already know, um, because I've been transitioning from the poverty side of life to the wealthy side of life. And um, so that's why... I decided that I was going to do a personal growth journey because you can't really be wealthy or famous with a poverty mindset. <laughs> so I had to do a complete mental makeover. Um, so I feel like a completely different person. Um, but it's very enriching, it's very rewarding, and I never look back. I'm very grateful so far. I'm extremely grateful. So, um, so in that respect, I've been watching a lot of Gary V motivational videos, and, um, I've been kind of obsessed with watching him because he he tells it like it is and uh, yeah he tells it like it is and he just what more is there to say he's very honest and genuine and he really does care it really shows through in his work so I use him a lot for motivation I use him a lot um, so in that regard, a few days ago, I had a dream that I had sex with Gary V. <laughs> and I know it's kind of like awkward because it's like, I didn't even think I had a crush on him. Maybe I do. I'm not sure. But I, I, yeah, I'm still trying to, I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> but um, I don't know. Maybe... That might be up for questioning. But um, I don't think... Well, before I get more deep into it... So this is how the dream happened. So I was having sex with him. It was in like a... Kind of like a public place. But indoors. So it was available for other people to see. So... One of my residents from my job was in the background and she noticed what we were doing and she was like kind of like kind of poking me or hitting my head from the back to try to get me to stop the act because <laughs> I guess in that moment it was very inappropriate for us to be doing that right there. <laughs> so... Okay, so I don't, really don't think the dream was actually about sex, even though visually, like on the surface, it looked like it was about sex. Because you know how some dreams have a, a different kind of meaning or different... Some dreams have a different connotation. Um, so... What I think the dream was actually about is how I, how do I say this? It's how I am transitioning from one way of thinking, crossing over into another way of thinking. And one way of thinking 
which would represent the resident, one of my favorite residents who was in the background in the dream. Um, Cause I told you, um, if you haven't watched any of my other videos, this resident is from an assisted living that I work at. So she's one of the seniors. Uh, she's actually <laughs> it's 100 years old. But she moves around very well for her age. And she dresses like she shops at, uh, I don't know, Forever 21 or something. Maybe not Forever 21, but... <laughs> but she dresses like she has some, some style. It's very inspiring, actually. But anyway. So she was in the dream, and um, I think with her being in... With her making an appearance in my dream has something to do with her representing my present life and what I'm leaving behind as I pursue my journey to entrepreneurship. So uh, my journey to entrepreneurship, I believe, would represent Gary V, which is why he was in the dream. So... Yeah, it was like a clever little way of just recognizing that I'm, I'm crossing into one journey, leaving from another. So it was like the present meets the future. And maybe even a little bit of the past. A little bit of the past versus the present versus the future. And the future was more dominant in the dream. Because Gary V was the star <laughs> of the dream, you know what I mean? So, that was one aspect of the dream. Then the other aspect is the part of the past that I'm referring to is... And actually, it's a part, it's a part of my present as well because I feel the same way. I haven't changed in that regard. But I believe... A big part of my fascination, or a big part of me is fascinated with people who are mentors. Uh, because my father didn't raise me. Actually, both my parents didn't raise me. My grandmother raised me up until she died when I was 14 years old. And um, there was always a part of me well, especially when I was younger, I was concerned about that. I was wondering, why haven't my parents raised me? Is there something wrong with me? So I've been, even still to this day, seeking a father figure. And, and I know this is leading to controversial territory because some people are wondering like, what, you wanna have sex with your father? <laughs> I'm not saying I want to have sex with my father. I can see how it sounds incestuous, but I'm not saying that at all. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is that when I find mentorship in people such as Gary Vee, I get attracted to that because I see a fatherly role that I... I've never been embraced with, I, I suppose, because I have a different dynamic with my father. Um, my father and I do, we talk, we do talk, and, um, but I don't know. I, I think there's something in that relationship that is stunted, and I think a part of me is Part of me is yearning for something deeper. Part of me is yearning for a deeper connection with my father. And it's the part of me that believes that I won't get that deeper connection because too much time has passed. And there's too much embarrassment, uh, maybe on his part, too much embarrassment about not being there for me and, and the stigma that, that, that parents are faced with when it comes to how often you were there for your child. And, you know, so, you know, it's not really something we could really talk about. 
because he's he might be in some way ashamed of it and uh we 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 are friends we talk and um yeah we're friends and we talk and it's just something that i just respect that i I just try not to put too much pressure on him to be this award-winning father that I've always wanted you know like and it's hard because of things that I've went through and things I'm currently going through that I still need help with and I think it all it boils down to not having the support system that I had when my grandmother was alive so I think there's that part of me that's still seeking support still seeking security And this entrepreneurship is about branching off, doing my own thing, and not relying on people to save me. Because, and and that was the biggest part of my personal growth journey to work through. Because I just felt like people had to save me. And it's like... Gary Vee will tell you in a heartbeat If you watch his videos He'll tell you in a heartbeat No one owes you nothing (laughs) And no one doesn't care about you So There's Something in that Where it just kind of It gives you a kick in the butt And it helps you realize It helps me realize I should say That I am the one I've been waiting for Um, so when you think of it that way, it puts a lot of pressure on you as an individual, like it puts pressure on yourself, but it's a pressure you need because it gives you the kind of pep in your step and the motivation that you need to not give up. Um, yeah, yeah, there's no other way to say it. Um, So that's what I believe my dream is, uh, decoding it on the surface. I haven't read a dream diary or anything along those lines, but just I'm deciphering the dream based on how well I know myself. (laughs) You know, I'm, I'm deciphering it based on how well I know myself and I know how my mind works. I know why I have certain feelings um, for the most part. I'm very in tune with myself thanks to this personal growth journey. And um, yeah, so I just wanted to talk to you guys about that. I thought you would be able to maybe enjoy that story or relate to it somehow. And just think about your dreams that you have. Think about them and kind of analyze them. Yeah, not necessarily decipher it with a dream dictionary. Although you could. But just understand where your emotions come from. And do everything in your power to make sure that you abide by your feelings, but in a healthy way. You obey your feelings. And you live your optimal life Um, but but keep those feelings that you have those inner feelings in mind so that way you could achieve optimal happiness because you're tailoring it to your feelings your beliefs about certain things so at the end of the day you're doing exactly what you want to do versus being forced to do something even though your intuition is telling you don't do it. So I just wanted to give you that. Um, it's just a little quick video. I'm going to head to work. I stopped walking. I know I should have been walking and talking, but I didn't want the camera to be shaking so much. So anyway, thank you so much. <laughs> Stay tuned, and I'm looking forward to spicing up your life one episode at a time. Bye.